In the last couple of years, smartphones have kind of plateaued in terms of progression, development, they've pretty much become a very similar formula copied and pasted across multiple brands. Now, the one place where smartphones are very aggressively competing now because they've kind of plateaued in other areas is cameras. So that's kind of the main marketing focus for most brands now when they launch a new smartphone is to show off their brand new cameras. And in my opinion, keyword being opinion people, remember mine can be different from yours, that's absolutely fine. This is just what I think. Um, this iPhone 11 and 11 Pro has the best camera on the market. I think um, the reason for that is I know it doesn't excel in every area that it's in, but I think that it has the most versatile all round performance that a lot of other phones miss out on. This is excellent with video. This is excellent with photos, portrait mode, front camera, rear camera. I think this has the best versatility of any phone on the market right now. And it just, um, it's my go-to whenever I think of a, f a very good camera on a phone. This is what I would go for first. Now, why I'm talking about all of this is because of the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now, OnePlus has always been known to make more aggressively priced flagship phones, and they've usually done this by cutting corners, usually with a camera. You know, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. It just doesn't stand up to the flagships, but it's been okay for the longest time because they don't charge you as much as the flagship, so it was something you could kind of ignore. But now this 8 Pro starts at $900, uh, goes up to 1,000, probably 1,000, um, 100 when, when you add tax and stuff in for the highest model. So this is most definitely a flagship phone and um, the camera, it has to perform like a flagship. And that was what I was very interested in seeing because the One, OnePlus has a history of having weaker cameras in its phones, especially when you compare it to um, iPhones and just any other flagship phone out there, but it made up in other areas. And because of the lower price, it's been all good for all these years, but now, that's not the case anymore. So what I'm gonna be doing now is comparing the iPhone 11 Pro and the OnePlus 8 Pro side by side, show you guys photos, videos, everything I can think of, and let you guys decide um, you know, if this stacks up to the iPhone 11 Pro, if this is actually a $1,000 camera, or if there's um, still some ground to be covered. So without wasting any time, let's get right into the comparison. All right guys, so let's start off looking at uh, some photos from the outdoor with both the 8 Pro and the 11 Pro. And the one thing I wanna start off by saying is that, you know, looking at these two photos, initially they look pretty similar, but the one thing you will see is that color seems to be a little bit um, on the flower with the 11 Pro. It just seems like there's more color, like there's clear variations and gradients Whereas the 8 Pro it just doesn't have that, especially when you look towards the center of that flower. And you know, that wasn't the thing that surprised me the most. Um, while it did surprise me that there was such a difference in color, and by the way, the 11 Pro, the iPhone, is definitely more true to life. This is what that flower definitely looks like in person. But when I was looking through this photo and looking at it carefully, look at the leaves behind the, the, the flowers, right? Behind the flower. Um, it's just crazy to me how um, undetailed the photos of the OnePlus 8 Pro are compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. Just look at the lack of detail in those leaves. And now this is a issue, like th this happens sometimes when you have a very high megapixel camera, when you have a huge sensor, what happens is it doesn't do good with background images. Whatever is in focus in the foreground is very detailed, but everything around it, even if it's a little bit behind it or out of focus, the focus just gets really soft. Now, I've seen this with very high megapixels, like over 100, I'd, I'd say, but this is the first time I've seen it with something like a 48 megapixel sensor with the distortion being this bad out of frame. Now, that just goes to show that megapixels don't mean everything, right? Megapixels, just more megapixel doesn't mean better photo. It very much depends on the type of photography you'll be doing to give you the right camera. So the iPhone definitely does a much better job of keeping things around the foreground in focus. Now moving on, let's look at this shot. This one I think is a lot more comparable. There's really um, not much to see here. The one thing that you will see is that there's a lot more darker colors on the OnePlus 8 Pro. I, I honestly couldn't tell you which one looks more real to life. They look very similar to me, but definitely the 8 Pro has highlights on the darker blacks, especially when you look at that tree. Um, just look at how much 
darker and you know it just looks a lot more contrasty when you compare it to the 11 pro i i don't know this this comes down to personal preference here both photos detail wise do a really good job but um color wise the 11 pro once again the iphone throughout with every photo is going to be a lot more true to life whereas the one plus is going to be more contrasty something you'd actually like to put on social media you know it's poppier it punches more the colors are accentuated so it really depends on personal preference um looking at these two photos i like the 8 pro more but i could understand why you'd go either way now this photo also very comparable very similar this i took right like there was direct sunlight behind the tree so i was under the shade of the tree so i tried to get the HDR to get kick in and try to um, work through things and I was actually surprised at how well the OnePlus 8 Pro did and how poorly the iPhone 11 Pro did in comparison because when you look at the tree look at the um, bottom part when you're looking at the um, the tree you guys can see there's just so much more detail there compared to the iPhone 11 Pro which looks a lot darker and even as you get up you know towards the top of that tree you guys can see you know they're both pretty similar so it just the 11 pro uh just didn't seem to be able to hold the light in detail on the bottom part of the photo as well as the one plus eight uh, the one plus eight pro did so um the hdr on this did a really good job in this shot now moving on let's look at a photo of a very close object now you'd expect that the macro camera and everything this this phone has going for it would give you better photos of a close-up object you know these are very tiny little um, plants and you guys can see as you get closer to them it's it's weird like the 8 pro just doesn't seem to want to hold focus anywhere it seems out of focus everywhere and more or less kind of i, I want to say more blurry than anything you know when you look at the 8 pro even when i zoom and punch in on certain areas it just looks sharp and detailed throughout whereas the a pro doesn't and that kind of goes back to that first photo where it just does a, it doesn't do a good job of keeping things that are you know in in frame and focus as well now moving on this this is a weird one right so this one is um it, whereas the a pro usually has puncher colors in this situation because there was a lot of light there's um some direct sunlight going on here it did something crazy with the exposure and it the photo looks a lot more washed out and brighter than the iphone 11 pro does and once again the 11 pro is more true to life so that that plant that leaf does look like that those colors are real to life but the uh a pro just kind of washes it out and makes it look a lot more dull than it is which is weird because for the most part it does the exact opposite uh once again this uh photo is pretty decent i i really think that the 11 pro does a good job with the colors on this one compared to the 8 pro though but focus otherwise is pretty good on both of the photos the one thing i do know is that when you punch in closer you'll see that there's a little bit more detail on the 11 pro which should not be the case if you have a 48 megapixel sensor on the 8 pro but it just goes to show how that again once again as i said the megapixel counts does not matter moving on again just another photo of trying to test the dynamic range um, direct sunlight above these um, trees the bamboo plants and um, the oneplus 8 pro has a much brighter image and the 11 pro has a little bit of a darker image but for the most part the details on both of them are there even if you zoom in you guys can see a lot of the same things um just the 8, 11 pro is darker and the 8 pro is lighter so again this will go up to personal preference i i'm liking the look of the 11 pro more the darker colors look nicer to me but i would very much understand if you prefer the one plus 8 pro because of it, it being lighter and being able to see more colors uh, easily so that really does come down to personal preference once again I think I really don't think there's a clear winner in either photos here now moving on let's talk about that front camera in outdoor conditions and uh, this is uh, punched out as much as possible the iPhone does have two modes but this was uh, as wide angled as possible and this just goes to show how much uh, wider angled the iPhone 11 Pro's cameras are so the 8 Pro doesn't really have a big field of, of view on the front camera which kind of sucks because that was important i think that's an important aspect of a front camera you want to get in as much as you can in your environment so this definitely is a clear win to the iphone 11 pro in my opinion also colors on the 11 pro are so much better 
on the front camera. Uh, the 8 Pro, my skin, just that color looks really white and um, kind of blown out, like very high exposure on my skin, whereas the 8 Pro, um, I'm sorry, the 11 Pro, the iPhone, just looks a lot more natural. That's kind of what my skin looks like if you saw it in person. So I think that the accuracy factor in colors is with the iPhone as well on the front camera and just the the level of detail it gets in with colors and everything. I think this one's a clear win to the iPhone. Now moving on, another just portrait mode photo from the front camera. Now you can't punch out as much on the iPhone 11 Pro as you could, you know, when you're taking a normal selfie, but still a uh, pretty good showing. And once again, you guys can just see color-wise, um, the, the, the OnePlus 8 Pro, I just, my skin is so much more whiter than it is on the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro is more accurate. I don't have that pale skin. Like, I wish I did, but I don't. Uh, my skin is a little bit more tan than that. Um, so looking at it, definitely the iPhone 11 Pro does a lot better. Uh, with the colors here and I think that it does better with the background blur as well Both of them don't have real issues with edge detection anymore almost every self You know the front camera portrait modes the edge detection has become really good So that's not really a point of contention anymore But the way the black background is blurred is just so much better on the iPhone. I think it's just so much more um, Intense and the thing is you can toggle with them to kind of change the bokeh effect there. So this one, I think iPhone 11 Pro takes it. Once again, just another selfie for you guys, front camera, uh, to show you guys kind of the disparity. And I kept this one in because I just wanted to show you that the uh, OnePlus, what it does is it really takes the highlights of the photo up. What a highlight is, is that it's like the brightness and the image, like the whiteness of the image, it, it increases that. And what it does is it kind of, um, distorts colors sometimes and that's what's happening with my t-shirt if you look comparatively they, they look two very different colors in both photos and that's not really a good thing when you think about it now let's take a look and compare the um, you know three lenses that both of these phones come with so the ultra wide the wide and the uh, telephoto lens so the ultra wide here the very interesting thing I'm noting is that um, again, this is an indoor room, but the lighting is very similar to what you'd find in most indoor places. It's not too terribly lit, um, but it's not dark at all either. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. But the thing I, I'm noticing is that the OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro, the ultra wide, it just looks so vastly different. So the first thing I want to give major props to is that the OnePlus 8 Pro is able to keep the photo so much brighter. Everything looks brighter. You can actually see things that are kind of hidden in the iPhone 11 Pro's uh, the photo, but the thing that I am also noticing is that the iPhone 11 Pro has a much, much wider field of view. Just look at how much more information is in that photo. You can, you can, you can see so much more of that iPhone. You can actually see the Xbox controller there on the iPhone 11 Pro. I'm basically, you know, I looked at these photos and the iPhone, the OnePlus 8 Pro's ultra wide is very similar to the one the iPhone 11's actual just normal camera the wide angle so it's a very interesting comparison the ultra wide is just not as wide on the i the OnePlus 8 Pro and that kind of sucks now the darkness of the image I definitely think that's a that's a point against the one the iPhone 11 Pro that photo is not acceptable in my opinion but when you're outdoors it doesn't have the same issue it's just when you're indoors the ultra wide does not look as good so I think there's a give and take here the OnePlus 8 Pro definitely does a better job in the dark. The iPhone 11 gets a lot more into that frame. So you got to pick and choose which one you guys would um, prefer. If you're taking a lot more indoor wide angle shots, ultra wide, that might go against the iPhone. But I think overall, um, both of them have their strengths and weaknesses here. Now moving on, let's look at the normal wide angle lens. This is the main lens that you'll be using most of the time. And once again, you guys can see that the iPhone is not as zoomed in. The the 8 Pro image is a lot more cropped in compared to the 11 Pro. There's just so much more detail. With the iPhone, you can actually see that the corner of the image on the um, of my iPhone. You can just see that the glimpse of the iPhone, whereas you completely miss it on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Um, colors definitely look uh, very different on both of them. The iPhone has a much more warmer hue, the warmer temp to color temperature on the um, wide lens, the main angle, whereas the 8 Pro has a much more cooler lens. I don't think either of them are accurate. The iPhone just goes way warmer, the, the OnePlus goes way cooler. The reality was a little bit in the middle of both of these, so neither of them do a great job. The one thing I will say though is that 
the um you know the 8 pro once again on the foreground like on the rubik's cube it does a great job of holding that focus it looks so much more detailed than the iphone but the iphone does an excellent job of making sure things behind it are in focus as well so when you look at that flashlight there's just so much more detail when you look at the monitor logo you, you can see there's so, so much more detail it's just it's such a give and take here that it's kind of weird to me um, the uh, it just the the one plus seems to have a much more of a bokeh effect whereas the iPhone 11 doesn't and again I don't think that comes against either phone I don't think that you can count them they're just like two very different styles of photography and you have to kind of choose which style you'd prefer and I really don't know it's just you know that's something that you would have to decide for yourself um, and let's move on to the telephoto lens so this lens. Now the iPhone has a 2x zoom, but the 8 Pro has a 3x zoom. So that means that the iPhone doesn't get in as close as the OnePlus does. And it actually does show, you know, it's just you have so much more, uh, you know, pulled in focus there. And while in the indoor situation, it doesn't really seem like that's a big thing. When you're outside, when you're doing, um, when you're trying to get images from farther away, that 3x zoom is a big, big help compared to that 2x zoom. And I didn't even realize how much nicer it is to have 3x over 2x until I actually compared them both side by side. Fantastic. Once again, the, the OnePlus does that thing where everything that's not in center, in the center of the image, gets distorted and starts to get blurry. So if you look at the top of that Rubik's Cube, things are just like so horribly blurry. It's almost like it's like it's so bad. Whereas when you compare it to the iPhone, you know, even in the very corner edges, there's not that significant like of blurring going on comparatively. So that's that's a trend you're going to be seeing with the OnePlus 8 Pro. So here, I think that the advantage goes to the OnePlus 8 Pro. That 3x zoom is definitely a lot nicer. Now let's compare uh, a shot indoor. So again, as I said, this room is not too bad. You know, the lighting isn't like, it's not completely dark, but it's not very bright either. This is definitely not what you'd, you know, film videos in. Like, this is not that bright, but this is definitely the kind of lighting where you'd just be sitting in a room working or something. Now, when you look at this, this is no night mode, by the way. This is just right out of the camera. I turned off night mode. And you guys can see, without night mode, the 8 Pro looks fantastic compared to the 11 Pro. The iPhone just does not do as good of a job iPhone does have more detail, but it's a lot darker. And I think in this situation, I would prefer the photo looking brighter than having more detail, but having the photo look a lot darker. Um, because at first glance, the OnePlus just looks like a much better photo. And a lot of times you just don't think about photos too much. You look at it initially and that's it. You, you make your judgment based on that. And even when you look at the background, um, of, of the image, you know, look at the flashlight in the OnePlus compared to the iPhone, you know, look at that pyramid in the back. You can barely see the pyramid in the iPhone photo, but you can very clearly see it on the OnePlus photo. It just definitely goes to show that there's something going on here where the 8 Pro does a pretty good job with the, the uh, limited amount of light it has. Now, things kind of reverse when you go to turning night mode on. Now, night mode makes a big difference mainly with detail. So initially, both of them look very similarly lit. They don't look dark too dark. But the one thing you will notice is that um, the iPhone has a lot more detail now. Just look at, you know, some of the, uh, the, the kind of latch on this little uh, tiny bottle I have. And look at the background. Look at that cable uh, going to the back there uh, from, from my TV. Just look at the details on that. The 8 Pro is a blurry mess in the in the background compared to the foreground, whereas the iPhone looks a lot better. Also, the um, color of this black sheet that's on the uh, OnePlus 8 Pro, it just looks different than it is in person. It's not like that. Um, and it's definitely not as light as it looks on the iPhone either. There's something going on there where um, the exposure from night mode definitely shifted the color of that cloth. So that's something I just want to make a note of. Um, but I think that with night mode, the iPhone performs a lot better because it just holds a lot more detail in compared to the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now, moving on, here's a shot, no night mode, just normal shot under the light. And at first glance, you'd, you'd think, like, immediately, if you only saw these photos for, like, two seconds, you'd say the OnePlus 8 Pro is better because it's brighter. And that's what I thought as well. When I, in when I initially took these photos on the camera, the 8 Pro just looked so much better. But when I got these two side-by-side, um, on in Photoshop, 
I've noticed the real issue here. Just look at the lack of detail in this photo and the colors are insane. Like on the OnePlus 8 Pro, this looks like an orange car. Like the, the Ferrari looks orange. It's not, it's a red Ferrari. Trust me, and just zoom, let me zoom in on the center there. Look at that stripe, you know. It's a fuzzy mess when you compare it to the iPhone. Like, just the iPhone is so much more sharp and detailed, but the, uh, you know, OnePlus, it looks so fuzzy and hazy. And that that's a trend with um, these indoor shots. iPhone will make the photo a little bit less brighter. It's not too overly, uh, you know, the exposure is a little bit more conservative, but the details are higher there's so much more detail and it just looks good you know and it's in focus too like look at the car to the left of this ferrari on the oneplus 8 pro it's such a blurry mess compared to the iphone 11 pro where it's a lot darker but the details of it aren't as blurry or you know just like completely washed away but another thing i did notice is because of the oneplus's um, 10, you know, the OnePlus has higher exposure here. You can see more detail in the poster in the background. So if you look at the top right of both photos, the poster there, it just has that more, you know, that extra bit of detail there that the iPhone misses because it holds back on the exposure. So here, I think that, you know, it, I want to, you know, I, it's a little bit more confusing to just say which one is the outright winner, but I think that the iPhone just edges out because the, the thing I'm taking a photo of, the thing that's in focus that I'm targeting looks much more better on the iPhone than it does on the OnePlus 8 Pro. But once again, you guys can see they have very different philosophies of what a good photo is. Um, now moving on, the front camera for the indoor test. Again, same lighting conditions as before, and it is both of them are certifiably terrible. I think that there's no doubt with that. The iPhone holds a lot more detail, but the um, 8 Pro is a little bit brighter. The 8 Pro just completely gets rid of any detail whatsoever. Just my face looks like a smooth, weird, it just looks weird. There's no detail to my skin whatsoever. Um, it just, it washes out any semblance of detail to make the image look a little bit better um, and less noisy. The iPhone is just a lot more noisy of an image, but the detail at least is a little bit better, I'd say, especially when you look around my beard area. Um, both of these photos are horrible. I really think that um, calling anyone a winner is just not gonna work. It's just both of these are equally terrible. Don't take indoor selfies uh, without good lighting is the moral of the story with this one. Moving on. Uh, this is a macro shot, so the iPhone, the OnePlus has this macro camera, and I really couldn't think of any practical uses for it because it just doesn't um, really have that high quality of a sensor that, you know, details are good with it. So I, the only thing I could do is while I was sitting there thinking about it, I realized, you know, let me try to take a close-up photo of my keyboard. And, you know, here's the, there's, there's that one comparison because the iPhone isn't really... Um, you know, made for this. The camera wasn't really tuned for this. It doesn't have any software to make take these macro shots or a lens to help with it. Um, it's just completely out of focus. There, I tried to get it to focus. It wouldn't, and it won't. Since it was so close, it just wouldn't. Whereas the A Pro does a lot better with the focus. And just uh, looking at it, you guys can see that it's just a night and day difference. So macro, it it's cool. It definitely is. You can definitely get some cool results out of it, but. The real world usage factor is what really confuses me. I really couldn't think of much. Now, here's something I shared with in my OnePlus 8 Pro review. If you have, if you watch that, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the OnePlus 8 Pro has a very big issue where it does not like to keep things in focus. So this is a photo side by side of my laptop screen with a Twitter tweet here. So there's my Twitter page and look at the two tweets. So when you look at the center, or kind of the main focus point, I, I tried to keep that Porsche Panamera to be in the, the focus. The car is supposed to be the focus. Now, that looks pretty decent on both cameras. But as you move up, look at Casey Neistat's tweet, and you guys will see what a horrible mess the OnePlus 8 Pro is compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. And I noticed this from day one. Whenever I'm trying to take photos of text or something or, or something of that nature, the um, center of the photo is clear, but as you get to the bottom, the top, or the sides, basically where it gets, it starts to pull out of focus, it just doesn't look good. Like, it's horrible. I don't know what to make of this. I, I honestly don't understand why this is happening. 
Uh, I've not had this experience with any other phone in the past and I've used so many. Uh, this is definitely a unique one of a kind issue. Uh, here's another angle as well and you guys can see while this one doesn't look as bad as that one, the detail is definitely lacking. It's, it's absolutely fine in the center. But as you move towards the top, you guys can see that there's just that like it starts to become so much more out of focus for some reason. And I've never seen it be this bad on a sensor that's only 48 megapixels. As I explained at the beginning of this, uh, you know, these side by side, it's just not a cool thing going on. It's just very hard to understand why this is happening. Alright guys, so this is the OnePlus 8 Pro on the left and the iPhone 11 Pro on the right. And both of them are on 1080 FPS. And this is uh, just normal uh, conditions, you know, something you'd see almost every day. Nothing too special. Uh, gonna switch over to the ultra wide so you guys can see what it looks like. You know, struggling a little bit with HDR on this, but uh, okay, not too bad. Let's move into the telephoto. So the one thing about the OnePlus is that it's a 3X telephoto not a 2x like the iPhone so it gets even uh, closer in so you guys can see just uh, it's, it's a lot more closer in. it just looks completely different from the iPhone but when I pull back you guys will see it's the same thing more or less so that's it for the iPhone 11 Pro and the OnePlus uh, I'm sorry the yeah the OnePlus 8 Pro here's just a quick stabilization test I'm gonna try to move it around while I walk so you guys can get a better idea but let me know what the audio sounds like and everything else in the comments below all right guys a quick camera comparison of the front camera on the uh, iPhone 11 Pro on the right and the OnePlus 8 Pro on the left. Uh, both of them are looking pretty decent. The iPhone definitely has a bigger field of view, which looks a lot nicer, especially for the front camera, because that's a little bit important in my opinion. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me just shake it around a little bit, you know, try to walk and see if I can get it to get some good stabilization there. Both of them have electronic stabilization on the front. So this is what it will look like when you're taking the video on the front camera. Let me know what the audio sounds like. That's what I'm most concerned about. So let me know down in the comments below, guys. All right, guys, this is the front camera test of the iPhone 11 Pro on the right and the OnePlus 8 Pro on the left. So let me know what you guys think about the camera quality on both of these. Again, this is indoor lighting, not too bright, but not dim at all. This is what you'd see most indoor rooms be lit at. Um, so let me know what you guys think of the audio quality and the stabilization and everything. I'm trying to shake around, try to get focus, you know, jarred. Uh, the one thing I can tell you guys is that um, on the display, the OnePlus 8 Pro is looking a little bit brighter, but you never know. It, honestly, it's only when you start getting these things into a editor that you realize what's going on. And let me go ahead and try this wide angle. So switching over to wide angle. And let's switch over back to the normal and then let's go to telephoto. Let's see how those perform. So the OnePlus 8 Pro is a 3x zoom, not a 2x. So that's why you're seeing a lot more of a zoomed in view. Definitely um, is a little bit more helpful in my opinion, but the video quality is not looking that hot. Uh, so that's it for the rear camera indoor test of the iPhone 11 Pro on the right and the OnePlus 8 Pro on the left. All right, guys, this is the front facing camera of the uh, OnePlus 8 Pro on the left and the iPhone 8, uh, 11 Pro on the right. Now, um, both of the, this is like indoor lighting. This is something you'd probably get at, like the average lighting in any room you go into in a building or something. Um, not very, very bright, but not dim at all. So what it looks like from the get go is that the OnePlus 8 Pro, at least on the display, is a lot brighter. But the uh, iPhone seems to have a little bit more detail and the field of view is a lot bigger as well, so a lot more information in the iPhone. So that's that, that's got that going for it. But uh, otherwise, they look good. Let me know what the audio sounds like in both of them because, um, yeah, that, that, that could be a deal breaker if the audio isn't as good. So this is on 1080p 60fps so that I could just keep them equalized. But, yeah, that's uh, the OnePlus 8 Pro once again on the left and the iPhone 11 Pro on the right. Alright guys, so here's an issue I've been having with the OnePlus 8 Pro. There just seems to be so much distortion going on. So, right now we're looking at uh, Twitter on my iPad Pro. And you guys can see the center tweet. So, Erica Griffin's tweet looks okay. It doesn't look out of the store or anything. But as you go on, look at the tweet above from Jacqueline. 
that looks really distorted on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Looks absolutely clear on the iPhone 11. So moving up, look at Jay's t tweet now. Jay's two cents tweet looks like absolute, you know, mushed garbage. It's horrible. Whereas when you compare it to the iPhone, it looks absolutely fine. And the same thing goes as you go lower on the screen as well. This is the distortion. I've noticed this both on photos and the video that uh, the distortion is just really irritating. Now, even if I pull back, you guys can see that there is still slight distortion, especially near the top. So, you know, the center seems to stay in focus. But as you get higher or lower in the photo, it starts to distort, and that's very annoying. So that's just something I noticed. I really don't know what's going on here. This is one of the first ones I've ever seen with such distortion on the main lens. You know, I expected a little bit from wide-angle lens, but not really from a, um, a front-facing, like a wide-angled normal main lens from the phone. It's just crazy to me. All right, that ran so much longer than I expected it to. So with all of those photos, all of those videos, every comparison point shown to you guys, I think the thing I have to talk about first has to be the um, distortion issues with the camera. That's just unexcusable at this price point. I can't believe this phone does this. Um, it's crazy to me, right? It's just, it sh a phone should not do this uh, with, you know, I don't think any price point phone should do this, let alone a phone that costs almost a thousand dollars at base. So it's just, it's insane to me. Other than that, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised at how small the gap is now between OnePlus and the you know one, one of the best phones in my opinion. Um, outdoor photos look very similar in most conditions. In some situations, HDR actually outperformed on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Um, when you look at video indoor, um, it's just the, uh, while this doesn't have as much detail, things look a lot brighter and in turn, I think that's a little bit more important when you're indoor to have a little bit more lighting and to be more clearly seen than to have more detail. So, you know, there's a give and take. Another thing that I'm very pleasantly surprised with has to be audio. Um, video has been just such a strong suit of the iPhone and it still is, but the audio quality on the OnePlus 8 Pro was just very clearly better. And I didn't even, I, I, I'm telling you guys, I was so shocked that I actually went and double checked my files to make sure that um, I was not, you know, copying the wrong file from the wrong place because the 8 Pro is just that good. The audio on video is a big improvement from Androids of before and it's definitely better than the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro. So that's it, a very, very positive thing about this. So I think overall, when it comes down to it, the camera still has ground to cover. It's not a bad camera by any means. I mean, uh, it's a very good camera and I think that most people that use it won't have too many complaints. But I think that the people who are expecting, who are coming from flagships like the iPhone before, they're going to feel this is a downward. If you're coming from a lower price bracket up here, it might feel just fine. It won't be something you'd complain about. But if you're coming from an iPhone, if you're coming from a Samsung or a Pixel, there's some things that you won't be able to excuse when it comes to camera performance. I think one of the main ones having to be that the um, 4K 60 FPS limit is still set at five minutes. So you cannot record unlimited 4K 60 FPS on this phone, which is insane to me. How can a phone this powerful in 2020 still not do something that a phone from 2017 um, the iPhone 8 can do with no problems. I mean, it, it's mind blowing to me. A three-year-old iPhone can do this without problem. What is the issue here? Why can't, um, you know, these, these Android OEMs figure it out, you know? What is going on? It's just crazy to me how that is still a limitation on the video side. And that just kind of goes to show more that um, this is definitely versatile and it has a lot more um, of a all-rounded package to offer. But of course, you know, the price is a, a big thing when you talk about the 8 Pro, I'm sorry, the 11 Pro, which starts at $1,000. So it is same the same price as this. It's actually, technically, when you compare base model to base model, it's $100 more expensive. But when you compare the iPhone 11, which has the same um, main camera and ultra wide as this one, it's only missing the telephoto, then that becomes a much different conversation because that is $200 cheaper than the 8 Pro, but gives you the same performance. So. Um, just a lot to think about here. My final verdict on this is simple. I still think that the 8 Pro needs to cover some ground. It's still not perfect, but I am pleasantly surprised with how good it is. And I'm actually walking away with a little bit less 
of a, I'd say rose colored glasses view on the iPhone 11 Pro. Um, it is not as, you know, as far ahead of the competition as I thought it was. It's definitely um, starting to, to feel the heat. And unless Apple really ramps things up this year, we're, we're gonna see Android start to once again, uh, beat out Apple with um, camera performance. And that's just gonna be, it's, it's great. You know, to, uh, competition is pushing everyone forward. And in the end, consumers are the winner. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to follow me on social media. I'll have all my social media handles right over here and down in the description below. And I've also started a blog on my website, so be sure to check that out and subscribe to the channel while you're at it for more up-to-date videos on both the iPhone, I'm sorry, the OnePlus and the iPhone. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.